Corrupt Authority by yours truly. Something about being in a psychically charged room had made everyone fully awake and energized, even Yusin. As they began to descend down the mountain slope, Yusin broke the silence. I can't believe I didn't see it. Mewtwo took me in as a guest, twice, and I slept through the second time. Nobody said anything. Kenta finally heaved an enormous sigh and rubbed his head with a knuckle. A deal's a deal, Yusin. Just drop us off at the nearest bus station and you can go back to looking for Suicune. I'm not so sure I want to do that now, mumbled Yusin from the driver's seat. You heard how Mewtwo reacted when you threw that master ball at his buddy. If Suicune is around here and I use mine within Mewtwo's territory, he'll probably combust my head or implode it upon my brain. You sure have a way of pissing people off. Hibiki added, trying a half-hearted joke. I know you meant well, but the guy above Mewtwo is God. I'm pretty sure he could even kick Arceus's ass. Believe me, I know, said Kenta, laughing weakly. But it was necessary. By the way, am I the only one here who didn't know you were a Pokemon master? Asked Yusin. Marina? Hibiki? They nodded. Huh. Well, that explains the self-confidence. But one thing I'm wondering... Yusin glanced back at Kenta. It's no small feat to brave Victory Road when first place in the Pokemon League tournament and then overcome the Elite Four and their champion. Why didn't you take Lance's place on the throne? I'll bet it would have paid well and you could have influenced the grip policies before they gained enough traction. Maybe, maybe not, muttered Kenta, resting his head back and putting an arm over his eyes. If Karen was right, Lance has no say in the matter. But as for me and the other masters, well, it's like this. When you defeat a champion, you have the option to take his place or let him keep it. Ever since Master Red withdrew from the official league, many of us have followed his example, myself included. You understand, we all begin the journey with visions of romanticized adventure dancing in our heads, right? It's the glory of the outdoors and the joy of Pokemon companionship that compels us. Uh-huh. Well, the champion position is the opposite of that. The League officials made it clear to me, it's a ton of paperwork and schedules and confinement to a single place for long periods of time. You aren't even allowed to use your original team anymore. You have to fight with lower level replacements against first time challengers. The first time I battled Lance, he wasn't fighting me at his full potential. I still wonder if I could beat him now with him using his best Pokemon. Part of the reason I respect Brendan so much is that he is a rightful champion. When Master Steven lost to Master Wallace, I suspect it was deliberate. Steven is far stronger than Wallace and probably held back on him. But Wallace's butt had barely touched the throne when Brendan came in and took him down. Wallace had no time to form a softer team. He used exactly who he'd used on Steven. Brendan won his title almost at the same time that Red did, and he's held his ground ever since. Yusin hit a bump in the road, causing Habiki's jaw to snap involuntarily, chomping down on his tongue. He whimpered, and Yusin lowered his head. Sorry. He laughed apologetically. But you know what? Brendan's probably being accommodated for his efforts in a cushy penthouse, rather than traveling pothole-filled roads and enduring the many discomforts that we do. Probably. But I don't regret shirking the responsibilities I would have otherwise had, said Kenta with a smile. Well, not much. Pokemon Masters enjoy the privilege of traveling pretty much wherever they want at a discount for the rest of their lives. I took advantage of that for a while. And you wouldn't believe the amount of job opportunities you get when it comes to outdoor employment. When I joined Silhouette Military Police, they made me a sergeant almost immediately. Yeah, Marina chimed in. My mom always had an answer for the folks in our town who questioned the point of Pokemon training. She said it was like joining the Girl Scouts, only better. It just looks good on a resume. She paused, then continued in a sadder voice. But nowadays, more and more of the jobs you can get are strictly limited to the military police. That can't be a coincidence, muttered Habiki. Our country's gearing up for war, but against who? Enemy nations of Japan, no doubt, Kenta muttered darkly. But the first war will be a civil war against us, the common Pokemon trainers. Not long after they had found the main road again, there was an unexpected delay. As the rover was passing through a town, Yusin alarmed everyone when he suddenly swerved into another lane, nearly hitting a truck. Ah! What the hell, Yusin? Hibiki cried, covering his head. Sorry! I don't know how it happened! Yusin apologized with a guilty look. I just... 
All of a sudden, I feel so tired. There's a parking lot to the right, Marina ordered. You pull in there right now, mister! Yusin didn't protest, and Habiki looked up to see the sign above the lot, Mountain Shade Inn. Parking was spacious, and Yusin found a spot and shut off the engine. You okay, Yusin? Kenta asked, looking at him with an eyebrow raised. Just tired, he murmured. I drove all night. A thought occurred to Habiki. Kenta, he only got to sleep for like five minutes. I know Mewtwo's psychic presence got us all wide awake, but that's worn off by now. Kenta looked sympathetically at Yusin. All right, he said. We can make our own way from here. I'm grateful for your help, Yusin. Get some rest now. Kenta, Marina called, opening the car door and looking out. We're parked at an inn. Why don't we get him a room? Well, uh... Kenta scratched his head and smiled meekly. Ever since my first attempt to steal the snag machine, I've stopped making public appearances. If anyone recognizes me... Oh, come on! You're wearing a cloak and a wig and we're out in the boonies. Who's going to recognize you? Kenta sighed. Okay, you check him in. I'll get a map to the nearest bus station and meet you there. Marina crossed her arms and gave him a defiant look. What? Do I have to spell it out for you? She huffed. I want to use a room, okay? I haven't got a proper meal or a shower in over 48 hours. Normally I would manage, but there's an inn less than 20 steps away. Are you serious? Kenta gawked. What kind of a Girl Scout Pokemon trainer are you? In the end, all four of them stood in the lobby, although Kenta hastily grabbed a newspaper off one of the couches and hid himself behind it. The receptionist gave the party an awkward look, Yusin looking dead on his feet, Marina caught in the middle of sniffing her armpit, Kenta holding the paper upside down, and Hibiki giving a fake, over-exaggerated smile out of nervousness. Nobody needed to point out the elephant in the room. They look strange. Checking out? She asked with a slight note of skepticism. Uh, no. Marina coughed sheepishly. Checking in. I know it's only nine in the morning, but here, we're paying with cash. How much is a room? The four of you are sharing a room? The receptionist asked, again not bothering to hide the tone of dismay. Machi. The voice of an older man issued from further behind the counter. A thin, slightly balding man with glasses appeared, wearing a suit with the shiny manager badge on the left chest area. He glanced at Marina. Welcome. However many rooms you want, they're all the same price. 9,000 yen. Would you kindly excuse us for a moment? Habiki watched as the manager beckoned Machi the receptionist over, probably to chew her out for not being polite to potential customers. A moment later, though, he was distracted by the conversation between Kenta and Marina. Hey, Kenta-sama, can you pretty please lend me 1,800 yen? What? Marina? Kenta, who now had the newspaper right side up, looked at her incredulously. You knowingly came in here without any money? Well, I'm not going to make you seem pay. He drove us. He drove us because I gave him a you-know-what to catch you-know-who. It wasn't an act of charity. It's fine, I got it, mumbled Yusin sleepily, reaching into his pocket. A second later, his back stiffened and his eyes widened. Hibiki watched him fish around in his pocket, coming up with only his keys. What the... Maybe I don't got it. Where the hell is my wallet? Did it slip out back at the cabin? You lost your wallet? said Kenta, sounding half sympathetic, half exasperated. He put a hand over his face, something that Habiki noticed he was doing a lot lately. This is really happening right now. For God's sakes! Machi the receptionist returned to the counter, looking pale and much more serious. So, how many rooms then, ma'am? she asked Marina. The latter turned and gave Kenta a pleading look. He heaved a sigh. Five minutes later, the brothers were sitting on a freshly made hotel bed, while Yusin pulled the covers over himself, still fully clothed. The hiss of the shower could be heard in the bathroom. The four of them had all ended up getting the same one room for 9,000 yen, as Marina had insisted on staying, though Kenta was adamant about conserving what limited funds they still had. There was a knock on the door, and Machi entered, bearing a tray of four bottles of water. Here, she said, with a strange edge in her voice. Mount Kenya Natural Spring Water, compliments of the inn. Uh, thanks, Habiki said, finding it strange that they were being given water out of nowhere. Hey, uh, I'm not trying to be snobbish or anything, but isn't this sort of thing normally done with wine? Yusin gave a tired laugh. It's your first time in the area, I see. 
he said, lifting himself into an upright sitting position and taking a bottle. Remember what I told you on the drive-in? Mount Kenya spring water is famous for its vitamins and minerals. It's world quality. I can barely keep my eyes open, but I'll have a drink before I drop off. He proceeded to gulp down the entire bottle with relish and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. <sighs> Refreshing. But it tastes a bit funnier than usual. Well, good night. With that, Yusin's head promptly hit the pillow, and he was out like a light. Jeez, dude, Hibiki said, staring as Yusin began to snore. Machi bowed and let herself out of the room with the empty tray. Good thing we got off the road when we did, said Kenta, mirroring Hibiki's sentiments. Hey, Marina, how's the shower water taste? It feels great, she called in a muffled voice through the door. Like my body's being recharged and energized. No, taste. Drink it for a second. Huh? Uh... There was a moment of just noise of the shower. It's also good. Like super water. I... Hey, what is this questioning all of a sudden? Are you trying to turn my shower experience into one of those creepy phone calls where you ask what I'm wearing? Of course not. That would require you to be wearing something. You're imagining what I look like in the shower right now, aren't you? You stop that this instant! Marina cried. You said it, not me, Kenta murmured, unscrewing the cap of his water. Hibiki grinned. You're playing it pretty cool for a teenage dude with a naked girl in the other room. We teased each other a lot like that back in our early trainer days, Kenta replied, reaching for the newspaper. But the truth is, I'm a little preoccupied with what I found in here. The paper you were reading upside down? Yeah, after I flipped it over. Look. Hibiki glanced at the headline, taking a chug of the water. Master tournament to commence on April 16th. That's less than a week from now. He looked up at Kenta. That's neat, I guess. But why are you showing me this? Remember the plan I told you about on the morning after you came to travel with me? Kenta said quietly. Remember how its late stages would involve a whole bunch of trainers battling silhouette and the forces of grip to get packed their Pokemon? Hibiki nodded. Well, I may have just found my setting. It's a bit earlier than I would have liked, but then again, I've put this off for too long as it is. Kenta set his water aside, apparently too distracted now to drink. Here's what I got from the article. It sounds like the population is still angry about losing the epic Pokemon battling that existed in the past. So to satiate the masses, it looks like our government's trying to prove that it's all about the trainer, not the Pokemon. Everyone who's ever been a Pokemon master has been invited to participate, to see who's the master among masters. So let me guess, you're planning on taking part? Hibiki yawned. Normally, this kind of news would excite him, but he was suddenly getting drowsy. Perhaps he was so used to the excitement that he'd become desensitized. But how? You're supposed to be dead. I think I'll be there. Whether or not I'll participate is something I'm still figuring out, but I'm forming a plan. Kenta paused and looked at him critically. Hey, bro, are you feeling okay? I'm fine, I just... Hibiki attempted to shift his weight on the bed, but to his surprise, he found his muscles suddenly sluggish and slow. Before he could stop himself, he fell to the floor, spilling the rest of his water. What is this? My body feels so heavy. His consciousness was starting to fade, and he heard Kenta gasp as if in recognition of something. There was a shuffling noise, and then a sharp whisper from Kenta. Marina! Get out of the shower, but keep it running! Get your Pokémon ready, and don't make any noise if possible! There was no reply, except for the smallest hint of the shower curtain rustling. Kenta's voice carried an edge of critical urgency to it that Marina must have heard, and knew better than to question. There was another noise of water pouring from behind, and then Kenta was speaking by Hibiki's ear. They have drugged the water. We didn't notice because Yusin was already exhausted, but someone wants us all asleep and vulnerable. I don't know how long they'll wait before coming to retrieve us, but I'm going to play it like they got me too. Don't panic, Hibiki. You're not poisoned, and I won't let anything happen to you.